Hi, my name is Brian. I'm going to talk about some history of the lake. Today we're going to look at three pieces of the lake history. The church, the uh, courthouse, and the lime tree. First we have the lake church and the high cross. The lake takes its name from the Irish word the Loch Meag, meaning the house of stone. This uh, monastery was founded in the 5th century by St. Caron. Second, we have the courthouse. The Lake Courthouse was built in 1838 by John Char. It was used by the Mead Grand Jury. The building was used as a courthouse until 1960. Thirdly, we had the lime tree. The lime tree represents William of Orange. It is still standing and it's the largest, oldest lime tree in Ireland. Now we have Katrina from the Dilly Heritage Group. Hi, my name is Katrina. Uh, I was born in this area uh, between Dilly and Belliestown and I've always had an interest in things old and ancient and of historic value. My father was actually in the Historic Society which was the precursor of uh, Dilly Heritage Group. Um, I'm currently the chairperson and um, there, unfortunately we are a small group at the moment but a very hard working dynamic group and um, we spend a lot of our time uh, fundraising and applying for our, um, funding for the various projects that we uh, hope to uh, do in the next, this year. Um, we're hoping to uh, fit out our room in the courthouse as a heritage centre and um, uh, have a um, digital um, way of showing um, and interacting with the heritage of the league. Also this year we're hoping to produce uh, an annals and hopefully then maybe some year um, lots of the members have uh, written an article that you know about some aspect of uh, Dooley. I myself did one on the, the Land Commission and their role in the population of Dooley uh, when they brought people up from the west of Ireland uh, to divide up the big landlord um, estates and into 30 40 acres and brought people up from the west of Ireland and uh, they've been third generation now but they're all very uh, active people in the, in the community. Okay, and they came from the west of Ireland? Came from the west of Ireland, mostly Mayo, uh, Galway, Sligo. Yeah, they uh, swapped uh, maybe eight, 80 acres of uh, mountainy, swampy, boggy land for 40 acres, a house, a hay barn and a cow shed. Oh really, yes. Yeah. So, and how would they pick the people? Who would they...? Well, I suppose like anything else, they applied for the scheme mm. and I suppose on merit then, maybe a married couple would get one before a single man, that type of... Oh, uh, right, right, yeah. yeah. So they were down in land that wasn't going to be Viable, non-viable land. So. so they came up here and it was a big change for them. Yeah, it's uh, so, yeah, it's Very big change for them. And yeah. And then, of course, there was a certain amount of resentment with the local farmers. They thought they should have gotten it. Yeah, you know. that's true, actually, yeah, from the area. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, I mean, land joining on, you know, they... Mm. Uh, How they, long ago was that? This was in the 30s. Oh, 1930s. 1930s, yeah. yeah. So many people yeah. come up to you now? Or oh, a lot of them? people now around the league. Um, all out uh, from, say, the school, out all, the, all of that area. Now, it wasn't only Julie Slane as well, Julianstown. There was a good few of them over there. A lot of them were being related as well. Okay, yeah. yeah. Relations coming up from the country, kind of living up here, would they be? No, no, no. Place? They would, you know, diff I suppose an area, a very bad area, there'd be a lot of relations, you know, a lot of mountainy. Um, what do you call it? Belmullet would be in, in an area now. Very, very scenic, very beautiful, but uh, very hard to live it in it. The next, uh, it's the next um, parish to America. 
Oh really, it's under kind of really west. Oh yeah, or, really west. Yeah. And very it's mountain. A bit like a rocky kind of mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah. yeah. So mountain. a good few of them came up from that area. The Dixons, which was a, a very big family around her lake, and very, uh, yeah. very uh, progressive now, lots of lorries on the road. And now we had Jim Curley at Dorian from the lake. Growing up in the lake, um, the, big <clears throat> the big industry in the lake was the fruit growing. And the fruit growing was introduced to the lake in the mid-1800s. And... Uh, they actually, some men from the Lee went over to Blair Gary in Scotland. They sailed through Drada Port and they brought home. Blair Gary is recognised as a big raspberry growing area in Scotland. And it was, um, it was happening then in the, in the 1800s. And these men brought back home raspberry canes with them. And that was the start of a massive industry. Every little plot around the place, through time, uh, from the late 1800s on, they were starting to grow raspberries, gooseberries and strawberries. I was a member of a group, the, the Fruit Growers Association. We used to have our meetings down in Slane, and um, I suppose we picked fruit up until we were 14 and 15. But anyway, uh, Later in life, I, I, I inherited the property and I started to grow raspberries myself. And uh, I got involved in this Fruit Growers Association. And there were a few growers locally. I think of Jim Conlon and um, Tommy Christie, just to mention a few. Now this is the early stage of the raspberry growth. I've just pruned the dead canes that produced the fruit last year. And uh, the foliage, as you see, is starting to come here, and I have them staked up. That's to protect them from shaking with the wind. And the uh, foliage develops, uh, and it develops well now into April. And then the blossom comes uh, in late April, and the blossom then is pollinated by the bees, and the raspberries develop from there. And uh, then uh, nor the normal time for ripening, it's about the end of June, beginning of July, and uh, the crop uh, keeps developing right in to July, sometimes goes as far as the end of July. The one thing I look forward to is the bees coming on, it's a lovely sound. Thousands of bees come to the garden every year, and, and uh, without the bees, we wouldn't have good pollination. So that's that's the most important part, as I see it, the raspberry growing. Now we also, also grow gooseberries, and uh, these gooseberries produce a massive crop. The foliage is just starting to develop. And the next thing then that develops is the small gooseberries. And uh, some of those bushes would be 60 years old. Uh, my, my uncle, would have planted them and I prune them every year and the crop on the gooseberries develops about uh, early July, the end of June and uh, those bushes have been consistent in producing big crops in my 50 odd years growing fruit. There's very big demand for gooseberries too, they're very, they're very popular for jam and for tarts etc. Thank you for watching our short history project. Thanks for Jim and Katrina for their input. Thanks for me uh, for all their help. The hope liked working on the project and I hope you enjoy it.